Hi, Indirest TV. Vietnam's stock market has had two rocky years, and in 2023, Vietnam's economic growth slowed down during interest rates that were higher, but currently the economic growth is in a bit more positive direction. And today we have Pun Elite's Lan Yen here to tell us how things are in Vietnam and in Pun Elite's stock portfolio. Welcome to the interview, Lan. Hi, Sarah. This is Lan from P1 Elite Fund, and I'm very glad to see you and talk to you today. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited for this interview. And I think first we could dive into Pun Elite's portfolio because I heard that there has been some changes there. For example, there are some new positions and some of them are even smaller companies. So could you tell us a little bit about these changes and uh, what led you to do them? Yeah, sure. Uh, it is true that we have been making a lot of changes in our portfolio during the past few months. We added many brand new stocks and some of them are large caps, some of them are mid caps and some of them are small caps. So you can say there are a lot more diversity in our portfolio as compared to before. Among our new stocks, as you have known, we added Vietnam's biggest technology, FPT, which is a large cap to our portfolio and increased our exposure to the IT sector to nearly 6%. We strongly believe in FPT's ability to continue its long-term growth story in the next three years uh, with the two key pillars being the IT services and a very fast-growing but rather less talk about education business, uh, which will benefit vastly from Vietnam are rising middle class and their soaring spending on education. The second exciting group of stocks that we added to our portfolio recently are the companies in the brokerage sector. The key story of the brokerage sector is the market upgrade. Uh, 2023 is perhaps the first year in history that we have seen the Vietnamese government being very proactive in pushing some key technical developments for the stock market. The purpose is for the Vietnam market to be upgraded to emerging market by FTSE or we call FUSI in 2025 and eventually by MSCI in 2026. So a lot of things have been going on this year. The theme of upgrading Vietnam to emerging market is perhaps not a new topic. Uh, it has been talked about every year. But perhaps this year is the first year in history that we see the Vietnamese government is serious about it. Uh, it has somewhat become the government's uh, KPI, and they are doing everything they can to make it happen. So the first thing we will see is the launch of a new trading, sy trading system called KRX that we have bought from Korea Stock Exchange. The system is now in the testing phase and the State Securities Commission expect to launch it by the end of this year or the first half of next year. The new system uh, will, will first help to attract some market long-standing bottlenecks in terms of funding in payment procedures or the settlement days uh, which have been keeping the Vietnam from being upgraded by FUSI for years. The new trading system will also allow the launching of some new stocks and also allow the intraday trading to happen. Now that is very important because intraday trading when, when it is finally allowed the market liquidity can easily triple from this current level which will clearly benefit the brokerage companies. There can possibly be some technical issues uh, which can lead to some uh, few more months of delay. But eventually, this time, we will definitely see it happening very soon. And of course, when Vietnam is um, expected to be finally upgraded to emerging market in 2025 and 2026, we can also expect strong foreign inflows as well. So next year and the next few years, we will see tremendous earnings growth from the brokerage sector in all their aspects, from brokerage fees to margin lending business to better uh, proprietary investment income stemming from the upcoming market rally. Uh, during the market crash at the end of October and, and even November, we had taken advantage of the crash to acquire significant positions in a few brokerage companies, and some of them we bought at very low valuations, which are just around the book values. Those are very decent companies with decent market share, uh, clean balance sheet, and low debt levels. Uh, 
their proprietary trading investment uh, Trump, uh, has very strong track records of outperforming the market during the good year, like in 2021, for example. So that is the second group of stocks that we just added to our portfolio in the last few months. Uh, the third group of stocks um, that we added to the portfolio in the last two months are some mid-caps uh, to large-cap companies in the retail consumer and F&B sector. Uh, they have different story, but all of them are market leaders uh, possessing significant advantages in their respective uh, sub-industries. One company has demonstrated resilience in a very weak year like this year when they reported decent earnings growth because uh, they were able to gain market share from other players and even expand their profit margin. And they still have a tremendous growth story ahead of them because the per capita consumption in Vietnam for the products that they are selling is still very, very low compared to other consumer products and especially compared to other countries. So that's the um that's the first company in in this uh, third group of companies in um uh, consumer sector. And we will definitely talk about uh, more of this stock in the our later publications. Some other companies in the consumer and retail sector that we added to our portfolio, uh, their sale prices and valuations have uh, been vastly damaged in the last five years and especially the last few months because in 2023, their earnings have declined uh, uh, from the slowdown in consumption as well as rising material costs. But as you know, we always like the idea of buying something at deep discount to their historical prices and historical valuation, and especially when their business results are in a bad shape. For the companies that we purchased, their earnings had very good chances to rebound to normal levels in the next year and the next few years, along with the recovery of consumption, and especially when their material prices are seeing very sub drops to normal levels. So that is the third group of companies that we just acquired in the last few months. And the four group of stock that we just added to our portfolio are a few smaller cap stocks uh, with a market cap of below uh, 300 million US dollars. About their specific names, uh, we will talk about more in our future letters. But I can say that those are very decent companies with leading market share in their areas. They also have compelling turnaround stories because they are having the worst year in 2023 when their businesses were uh, strongly affected by many macro factors, including the high interest rate, uh, which led to the steep declines in their earnings. Uh, we have bought those copies in the last two months when their share prices have already tumbled uh, 50 to 80% from their peaks. And they were trading as strong discount to their book value when we bought, even when the debt level is not that high. And we were, uh, and they were still able to make some small profit in a bad year like this year. Uh, this company's earnings uh, had stolen in that the, the very first sign of recovery in the third quarter this year. And based on our latest meetings with them, they are expecting the earnings to make a strong recovery in 2024 especially when interest rates have seen significant drops to even lower than COVID levels. So in our opinion, that will offer some great upside ahead for these stocks. So that was the summary of um, some group of stocks that we just, uh, we just added to our portfolio in the last two months. Okay, great. A lot of exciting news. And like you said, a lot happening. It's going to be exciting to see how these things progress. But next, we could dive into banks a little bit. Uh, as we know, a big portion of Pun Elite's portfolio at least has consisted of banks. Does Pun Elite yes. still have strong faith in the banking sector and the bank positions in your portfolio? Okay. Uh, I think the banking stocks have been uh, having a challenging year in the year 2023. Uh, some of them have seen a significant slowdown in the earnings growth in the first nine months. Uh, the first reason is the lower NIMS, uh, which came from the fact that the banks have 
mobilized deposits at very high interest rate in the fourth quarter last year and the first quarter this year. Another reason is um, somewhat higher provision expenses and slow credit growth, which were also the result of high interest rate environment. Yet even in that context, some good banks, especially the banks that we are holding, are still reporting decent earnings, uh, which is better than most other sectors in the stock market. Uh, currently, the, the economy is already getting uh, much, much better. First thing you see is the deposit rate, which has just uh, recently dropped to the lowest level in history. So we expect that over the next uh, one to three quarters, the bank input interest rate will decline faster than the lending interest rate because the bank will soon run out of their high cost deposits. That will lead to a strong recovery in the NIMS. And due to the soft reductions in the input interest rate, now the bank can offer their clients much better lending rates than the first nine months. So we have seen a strong recovery in credit demand recently, uh, which will also reflect in stronger credit growth over the next few quarters. Uh, overall, I believe uh, we will see a significant improvement in the bank's earnings result as soon as uh, the fourth quarter this year uh, you know, are uh, the latest uh, in the first quarter of next year, we will see that happen. So in terms of bad debt, I would like to note that Vietnamese bank NPL ratios has a very strong connection with the cycle of the interest rate and the property market. The last down cycle of the real estate market in Vietnam 10 years ago has also caused a rise in the NPL. But after each down cycle of the property market, we will see strong divergence in the banks where the bad banks will be brought up on the market and the good banks will thrive and grow by multiple times during the next up cycle of the property market. That all depends on their respective lending practices. We can say that we are having some of the best bank in terms of asset quality and they have some of the most prudent lending practices among all the banks in the market. So even though NPL has somewhat inched up a little in the last few quarters because of the down cycle of the property market, the NPL is still uh, much lower than the last down cycle 10 years ago and is still well under control. About Vietnam's uh, property market, uh, the prices have somewhat bottomed out in the last few months and the market liquidity liquidity is improving uh, thanks to the steep declines in deposit rate. Along with some key developments in the legal frameworks, I can say Vietnam property market is getting out of the stock cycle rather quicker than last time. So overall, we still strongly believe in the long-term growth story of the banking sector, especially the banks that we are having in our portfolio. In the next few years, uh, they will grow strongly in line with economic recovery and the next upcycle of the property market. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, then we could talk a little bit about the Vietnam Stock Index. It's still rather yes. cheap, we could say. So what would have to happen for the Vietnam stock market to get to an uptrend finally? I think right now the Vietnam market has all the catalysts that it needs to enter a strong uptrend and perhaps it just needs uh, just a matter of time before the market really takes off. In terms of valuation, the price to sales and the price to book ratio of the Vietnam market are near the lowest level in the history. If we talk about PE, then the forward PEs of VN index in uh, 2024 and 2025 could be well below 10 times. One thing that I think many people in Vietnam have not realized is that the period of high deposit rate of 6 to 7% like in the past 10 years and in the last decade will likely never come back. And in the context of very low interest rate, it is just a matter of time before we see a re-rating re rally happening. In terms of what the market needs to take off, I think the most important thing is for the investor sentiment to get better. Uh, 2023 was a very bad year for most of the sector in the Vietnam stock market, uh, which is caused by high interest rate in the first half of 2023 and the negative growth in export and the slowdown in consumption. 
But I think that is why right now investor sentiment is still in a somewhat negative mood because of what happened in, in this year, especially after disappointing results in the second quarter and third quarter. However, I believe that the sentiment can return to positive after investors see some earnings recovery in the fourth quarter of this year or the first quarter of next year. When they see the earnings recovery, I think they will become more confident in the economic recovery path and the earnings growth prospect of the listed company. That would be when the market uh, will take off and return to their normal valuations, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, well, lastly, let's talk a little bit about politics. Uh, the president of China, Xi Jinping, visited Vietnam this month, so it's a recent news. And as a result, China and Vietnam agreed to step up cooperation and build a so-called shared future. So what's your take on the situation between China and Vietnam? Uh, thank you. That's a very interesting question. You know, Vietnam and China have been having a long history together of uh, spending over 4,000 years, as I remember. But during the past 30 years, and especially the past few years, I can confidently say that Vietnam and China have been on very good and friendly terms. I would like to note that this year have marked the 15th year since uh, Vietnam and China officially began their comprehensive strategic partnership. Our bilateral trade value have been showing very strong growth over the uh, over, over the last few years, uh, both in official trade and unofficial trade. And in the last few years, as you have already known, there have been large FDI inflows from China, as many Chinese manufacturers want to set up their manufacturing base in Vietnam. So my expectation is that we will continue to see even stronger FDI inflows from China to Vietnam in various types of industries. And at the same time, our trade and tourism between the two countries will grow further as well in the next few years. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you. Well, to continue a little bit about the politics, the president of USA, Joe Biden, also visited Vietnam in September. And as an outcome, US and Vietnam's diplomatic relationship elevated to a comprehensive strategic relationship. Uh, what's your take on this? And how do you see the combination of Vietnam warning, warming up relationships with both China and USA? Thank you. That's another interesting question. I think the visit of U.S. President Biden marked an important milestone in Vietnam-U.S. relationship. As you know, in the last decade, Vietnam has benefited uh, tremendously from the third big wave of FDI inflows, especially from the big South Korean corporations. Vietnam's manufacturing sector and export growth have seen double-digit growth in many consecutive years in the last decade because of that. My take is that over the ne next few years, Vietnam might witness the fourth big wave of FDI inflows after these two historic visits of uh, both China president and US president. Overall, I think Vietnam has uh, a good opportunity to see a stronger economic recovery in the next few years, which is supported by strong FDI inflows, trade and services growth after these two visits. I think during the September visit, Vietnam and U.S. have specifically talked about the cooperation and investment in the sectors like the semiconductor, for example. So Vietnam, I think, has a good chance to benefit from the global supply chain diversification in the chip production industry. I think the fact that Vietnam is warming up relationship with both U.S. and China is not something new or surprising to us Vietnamese people. Because over the last few decades, Vietnam has been maintaining a firm diplomatic policy in which we are friends and partners with all the countries in the world in terms of economic ties, cooperation and free trade, while keeping our neutral stance on all the geopolitical issues. That diplomatic policy has worked very well for us in the last three decades and will continue to be our key policy for many decades to come, in my opinion. Okay, thank you for this interesting interview, Lan. It was a great pleasure talking to you and I wish you a nice weekend and happy holidays. Thank you uh, for this interesting interview. 
And because Christmas is coming, so I would like to take this chance to wish you and the audience of Interest TV a Merry Christmas and a successful and Happy New Year.